Stay tuned. Ahead, I'll talk with K.A. Cobell about Looking for Smoke, this fast-paced thriller novel for young adult and older readers uses fiction to explore the very real problem of missing and murdered indigenous women. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and this is Some Books Considered. About the author, K.A. Cobell is an enrolled member of the Blackfeet Nation, and she joins us to talk about her debut novel, Looking for Smoke. K.A., welcome to Some Books Considered. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you and your listeners and followers. Well, before we talk about the plot of this book, tell us about the very real issue and problem that inspired this novel. Yes, the epidemic that inspired parts of Looking for Smoke is the missing and murdered indigenous women's epidemic, which is an issue that plagues the U.S. and a lot of people don't know about it. They don't know that Native women are the victims of violent crime far more often than any other group. Um, the murder rate of Native women is three times more than that of white women. And in some locations, it's 10 times the national average. Why is it that we're not more aware of this issue? And why does it seem to not be taken quite as seriously as other crimes by law enforcement, etc.? I don't know. You know, I think... I'm not sure why people aren't talking about it, because when I hear the numbers, you know, they're devastating. And I think, where, why aren't people mad about this? Um, because so many people are affected. There are so many Native American tribes in the U.S., so many communities that know about it and are dealing with it. So why aren't people outside of it more aware? I don't know. I think um, the first step is trying to get the stories out there. And that's something I'm trying to do and looking for smoke is to put these stories out there to say, look, look what's happening. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where the lack of coverage is coming from. You mentioned the numbers are alarming. Give us an idea of how big this problem is. The numbers are, I think, 84% of Native women have experienced violence and 56% have experienced sexual violence. And yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a big problem. Like I said, there are hundreds of tribes in the U.S. and we all know about it. You know, we're, we all know someone or, you know, have heard of people close to us, mutuals, who have been a victim. So as you pointed out, one of the important things you wanted to help accomplish was to raise awareness about this issue through your novel. So tell us about the story here. What are readers going to find? So in Looking for Smoke, uh, it's a young adult thriller, and it follows four teens on the Blackfeet Reservation as they're grappling with the murder of one of their classmates, who they each had a fraught relationship with. And because each of them were the last to see her alive, they all become suspects. And if they want to clear their names, they're going to have to trust each other. Even though one of them could be the murderer. Now, this is your debut novel. And like a lot of writers, you sort of seem to have followed that old adage about write what you know about. So you've drawn upon your heritage and your experience. Tell us about how that played into the creation of this novel. Well, this novel idea at the very start was because I wanted to write Blackfeet characters into a book. Because one, I never saw that growing up. I don't think I ever saw a single Blackfeet character. And two, because I have so much pride in my Blackfeet culture, <clears throat> and I really wanted to show that. And I think it inspired most of the book. You know, I really wanted to make the characters and the setting to feel authentic. So I brought in a lot of my childhood memories and my family experiences and stories and a lot of the cultural things that I have experienced, like going to powwows and uh, the stories there. And this story, Looking for Smoke, actually starts at a powwow at the North American Indian Days, which is a celebration that takes place on the Blackfeet Reservation every year. 
So I really tried to bring in the things that I thought would honor my culture and my family. And as we pointed out already, you're also trying to raise awareness about this issue. So how do you balance that of raising awareness, trying to bring in the facts and figures, but also not letting that bog down the narrative you need for an action-packed novel? So tell us a little bit about that challenge. Yeah, I knew it was going to be like a tightrope walk. I knew that it was going to need a really careful hand um, writing this story because I never wanted to uh, take away from the real cases or to sensationalize that real pain that families and communities are experiencing. So I tried to really write from a place of empathy and from a place of true emotion. So the characters are going through a lot. And I tried to really make the emotions relatable to everyone. And another strategy I used was to bring in some mixed media. So there's the four points of view of the main characters, but then there's also a mystery unknown point of view. And this unknown person is listening or reading um, media. So there's a podcast and like a radio show. So someone is listening to this. And in the podcast, they speak of the MMIW epidemic. And I use that as a way to create a bit of a degree of separation between these fictional cases I'm talking about and the very real statistics. So those are brought in through this other medium inside the story. I'm talking with K.A. Cobell about her novel, Looking for Smoke, and our conversation continues in a moment. If you appreciate this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you'll know when I post new interviews. And thank you. I'm curious about, obviously you had to do a lot of research. You were aware of this issue, but you had to do additional research to make sure you had the facts right and the most up-to-date information. So what sort of surprised you or new things that you learned as you were doing that research? The statistics surprised me. You know, finding the actual numbers where, I mean, 10 times the national average of murder rate, that's huge. That's shocking. And I did do some research to make sure I had those numbers right. But I also have a family member who was a a U.S. attorney in Montana and was on the Montana State Missing and Murdered Indigenous Person Task Force. And so they were my expert source. Um, I would ask them questions about how the investigations might go in the story and the law side of things. So I tried really hard to make it uh, truly representative of cases that are out there. And as you pointed out, you brought a lot of your own culture into this novel, but I'm sure you wanted to be careful that your representations of that culture were respectful and accurate at the same time. Yeah, I I did. I tried to be really careful. I wanted to show, you know, a full range. So all these characters are going through a trauma and I wanted to show the true emotions behind that. Um, I bring in a lot of grief and trying to overcome that. But I also tried to bring in uh, the the joyful parts that come from my community. Um, there's humor and hope. And I tried to show that as well. And I brought in a lot of things that would, things from my culture that, have been significant to me. And I brought in, like like I use actual family names in a lot of this story, Um, different names that come from my characters, like First Kill, Arno, those are like real names from my family line, but also Looking for Smoke. That is the name of my fifth great grandfather. So it was really special to be able to bring in so much of the beautiful parts of my culture to this story. This book is being marketed as a young adult novel, but do you feel like this is a novel that could appeal to older readers as well? 
Definitely. I have heard from a lot of adults that they think this is truly a great read for all ages, well, teenagers and up. And I think that's because the emotions in it are really relatable. I mean, these teenagers, they're young characters, but they're going through a lot of things that we all go through, adults and teenagers, of you know, wondering if we're enough, wondering where we fit in, going through loss, betrayal. It, it's just a full range. And I think we can all find a character to relate to in this story. There's a question I like to ask authors of fiction, and it's this. If you could spend a day in real life with one of the characters from your novel, who would it be and why? Oh, that is a good question. (laughs) And I have a lot of characters to choose from. I think I would say my character named Mara. Um, She is the new girl to Browning, the city this uh, place is set in, or the story is set in. She's trying to figure out where she fits in. She feels like a bit of an outsider. Um, She's bicultural, so she's part Blackfeet and uh, part white. And I think a lot of her journey was inspired from my own life because I am bicultural and I didn't grow up on the reservation but we visit a lot and I visit every summer. But I think it would be fun to spend time with her because I think we would relate to each other a lot and, you know, figuring out, am I enough? Am I Blackfeet enough? Like, do I fit here? And I think it would be really cool to uh, experience that with someone. Well, congratulations on this debut novel. So I'm curious, now that you have that under your belt, What's next? More thrillers. <laughs> I uh, I love writing and reading young adult thrillers, and that's where I see myself to continue working. And I have a couple stories that I've written and I need to uh, continue to work on. They're young adult thrillers. They feature Blackfeet characters, and they continue to shine that light on MMIW. The book is Looking for Smoke by K.A. Cobell. K.A., thank you for talking with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I love talking about Looking for Smoke, and I really appreciate you speaking with me. If you'd like to purchase Looking for Smoke, I've placed a link for you in the description below. And if you'd like to see more videos about books and their authors on a wide variety of topics, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. I'm Dan Skinner. Thank you for watching this edition of Some Books Considered.